Welcome to Lister Gaming. My name is Cloudart, and today I will be talking a little bit about Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I started this game uh, with my wife on November 20th of 2020, and we put it on the list on January 9th of 2021. And, oh boy, this was a great Warriors game. Uh, we've been playing the Dynasty Warriors games together since Dynasty Warriors 6, so we've done 6, 7, 8, 9... Uh, the first Hyrule Warriors, uh, the Fire Emblem Warriors, and then this one. And got to tell you, this is the best one. Uh, the story for the game, first off, is definitely superior to Breath of the Wild. Um, even though this takes place a hundred years in Breath of the Wild's past, uh, since you're playing as the champions from the Breath of the Wild game uh, before, you know, all of that happens. It's, it's the Age of Calamity. So in Breath of the Wild, they talk about what happened 100 years ago. This is what happened 100 years ago. So you're, you're fighting against hordes of enemies uh, in traditional warriors style. And uh, it's just great. There are a ton of different characters in the game. Uh, all of them have unique attacks and uh, like power up not really power ups the the Sheikah slate is one of the new item things in it and you'll probably familiar with it with breath of the wild but in this one everybody can use it and so uh everybody has the bombs and the stasis and the cryonis and the magnesis and each character has a different like animation for those which is which is pretty cool they all do the same thing of course but uh the the animation is different and that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, but all, all the characters are quite a bit unique to each other. Um, and the play style is uh, definitely varied with them. So some of the characters you want to do a lot of aerial attacks. And some of the characters you uh, want to try to fight them at range. And some of the characters you want to be right up in their face. It's, it's a pretty wide range. And uh, they're all quite fun. There's like maybe two characters that we don't really care about. Uh, one of our issues, though, is that there are some characters that we don't necessarily like for story reasons, uh, but they're super fun to play as in the game. So we kind of have that, uh, you know, strange feeling for that of, well, I don't want to be this person, but I also really do want to be this person. So it just, it makes for a good time. Another similarity with Breath of the Wild is that there are Koroks again, and you have to find the Koroks within the levels to get Korok seeds. Thankfully, there aren't as many as in Breath of the Wild, so you're not looking for 900 of them. Uh, but they do have a similar uh, thing that they are using for you. Uh, collecting the Koroks is your primary way to increase your weapon capacity. Uh, so you can only start off being able to hold like 20 items per character. And I'm not sure what it gets up to. So far, we're at like 37 slots or so uh and so we're i, I probably should have said this at the beginning we have finished the story of the game and then after you finished that it unlocks a bunch more missions and so we are slowly working through those and we're we're most of the way through them i believe um there's only only a few more on the map but some of these missions when you complete them they unlock something else somewhere else on the map uh, and that kind of keeps you going for it. So I'm, I'm really not sure how much we have left, but we've been, we've still been really enjoying it and, and playing, playing it a lot. Uh, it feels a lot better than the first game, partly because you know game mechanics are different. Uh, but the how the procedure of the game is is much better. So in the first one, it was just select the next thing from a menu. Uh, and in this one, you actually have the map of Hyrule, like you did in Breath of the Wild, and uh, on it are, like, points of interest, basically. And some of them are main missions, and they have a bigger icon. Some of them are side missions with a smaller icon. And then a lot of them are, like, a character's uh, portrait or representation, some sort of stamp thing for them, uh, or like a, a shop stamp. And for those that aren't actual missions, you have to, uh, in order to complete them, you have to bring certain resources there. Uh, and it's just selecting them on the map. But within the stages, 
you can like break chests or when you defeat enemies or cut grass or something you'll get various resources like fish or fireflies or rocks or you know all of the stuff that you could have found in breath of the wild you can get kind of haphazardly as you go through this and so for some characters you need like three volt fish and then this mushroom that helps with electric resistance and then you need to defeat uh five electric moblins and then after you have that you can go to this or you can turn them into this place and then that maybe will give you a recipe to boost your lightning resistance to something or to enemies uh so that sort of stuff so all and every single one of these things has a little like paragraph story snippet and then when you turn the things in it has a resolution story as well and there's there are, we have i think done over 250 of these and they're they're all really so bite-sized though that it, it doesn't feel like you're really having to do a whole lot of work for them you're just kind of continuing with playing all the levels and then you get all the stuff uh, so it's it's pretty neat and pretty fun. It doesn't really feel overwhelming. Um, if we were to have everything unlocked all right away, it probably would be. But since since we did all the side quests before we did the next main quest, eventually you know you get to the point where you've done all the side stuff. The only thing left is the main quest. So then we would do that, and then it would unlock a bunch more things on the map. Uh, and I think doing it that way is probably the best way to go. Otherwise, you're just going to be too inundated with other things. You aren't going to know which thing to do next uh, but it, it is super fun uh, the only real downsides that I had for it was uh, the music is really standard warriors music which is kind of that uh, upbeat rockin stuff but none of it really stands out like it's always it's it's in the background and it's fine but like I wouldn't be able to go back and think of any of the music from that right now that isn't like maybe in a cutscene where they do a specific thing of music that's more so from Zelda like some sort of traditional Zelda music uh, other than that like the new music it's fine but it's not really memorable so it's it's there but you know whatever and then the biggest complaint that we had was in two-player you're playing split-screen which is normal but when you're fighting some of the bigger enemies like the the elite soldiers or the uh, officers from previous games, uh, a lot of times they will telegraph an attack and then it will show a symbol above them and that symbol will be something for one of your uh, Sheikah Slate moves. So like your bombs or your stasis or something. And the, the enemy sort of glows that color as well. Uh, however, in split screen, the icon appears over their head and the camera by default kind of tips tilts down a little bit to see you and directly what's in front of you but it doesn't let you see kind of above enemies so most of the enemies you're not even sure uh what thing you're supposed to use against them and it's especially difficult when it comes to bombs or the um the cryosis cry cryonis cryosis the ice one uh, because they are both blue and so if you can't see the icon and you're not familiar with the enemy and which attack they're doing then you know we're like well 50 50 we'll just try this one and hope it works and if you're su if you're successful in it then you kind of stun them and then it brings their uh, their weak point gauge out so you can knock them down and then take them out easier uh, so it's they're pretty critical to to get especially earlier on but in split screen it's just it's much more difficult to see those and that uh, that was not so great but all in all the game is still fantastic like I said we're still working on finishing everything and uh, my rating for it came out to a 9.25 and so that's that's for this hack and slash age of calamity it's it's pretty great even the minor gripes with the camera for two-player and the music um, wasn't enough to really drop it that low so yeah 9.25 game is great I highly highly recommend it for Nintendo switch 
So thanks everybody for watching. Uh, if you like this content and want more, make sure to subscribe to Lister Gaming, and we'll be uh, keeping you up to date with games that we finish and hopefully have short reviews like this. My reviews are probably going to be longer than P-Notes because that's how I roll. I just won't shut up. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, and or I already said subscribe. If you leave a comment, uh, let us know what you feel about this game. Do you think the game's awesome? Do you think the game is awful? And we'll talk to you about it. We'd, we'd love to discuss that sort of thing. Uh, but un until next time, keep playing games so you can put it on the list. Thanks.